Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. There's no denying that we live in a polarized world. At the root of our divisions are some pretty unflattering opinions. A study from the Pew Research Center paints a grim picture. Many Americans now view those with opposing political views as lazy, immoral, and closed-minded. This growing divide isn't limited to the United States. It's a global issue, causing serious conflicts and impacting millions of lives. Disagreements and conflicting opinions needn't be the end of the discussion, never mind the end of the world. It's possible to disagree and still hold out respect for your fellow human beings. This is the primary point of the author's work, how to respond to conversational conflicts with respect. Not only that, but in the sections ahead we'll look at how we can all learn to benefit from disagreements rather than just fear them or walk away from them. Chapter 1 – The Five Pillars of Respectful Disagreements You've no doubt heard the phrase, let's agree to disagree. You may even think of it in a positive way. But this sentiment is often used as a last resort, a way of giving up and cutting off the conversation before things get out of hand. To put it simply, agreeing to disagree isn't an effective way of resolving conflicts, seeking to understand one another, getting someone to see your side of things, or even showing respect. That last part is what it's really all about. The solution is respectful disagreement. It's not about becoming a pushover and accepting someone else's opinion, and it's not about keeping your mouth shut and avoiding conflict. Rather, it's about handling conflict in a way that doesn't damage relationships. It's about starting from a place of respect, open-mindedness, and a willingness to listen. The first question is, how do we see others and ourselves? More to the point, can we look past differences and treat everyone with equal respect and dignity? Can we see ourselves as students of life who still have things to learn? By answering yes to these questions, we can expose ourselves to new perspectives, strengthen our relationships, and create more harmonious environments. Let's explore a way to bridge divides using the five pillars model. First, challenge your perspective, question your views, and be open to other angles. Second, be the student, always be ready to learn from others. Third, cultivate your curiosity, ask questions, and seek to understand. Fourth, seek the gray, find the middle ground where nuance exists. Finally, agree to respect, go beyond tolerance, and actively respect differing views. As you're probably starting to see, it all boils down to respect. Often we think of respect as something that has to be earned. Instead, we should think of it as a gift we choose to give to others. This is the concept of golden respect. It's like the golden rule, treat others as you wish to be treated. Well, wouldn't you like someone giving you respect without jumping through hoops to earn it first? Golden respect acknowledges our shared humanity and it sees everyone as worthy of this basic consideration. Respectful disagreement isn't about winning or converting others. It's about honoring their dignity and worth. By modeling this behavior, we encourage more open and empathetic dialogues. This approach has the power to break down barriers and foster understanding, much like a sincere apology can mend a rift in a heated argument. Respectful disagreement can transform our interactions, making our relationships stronger and our communities more united. By embracing these principles, we can navigate conflicts with grace and build a more respectful and connected world. Chapter 2 – Building Bridges and Knocking Down Barriers Before diving into the five pillars in more detail, it's important to recognize what causes disagreements in the first place. One of the big problems with our current level of heightened divisiveness is that we have come to believe that those with opposing views are inherently different from us in some way. This is essentially a dehumanizing point of view about others. And once we start to dehumanize others, that's when things can go from bad to worse. Respectful disagreement starts from a more honest place. 
It recognizes that we are all human beings with a past that has shaped us into who we are today including the opinions and beliefs we hold on to. More than that, our past experiences influence the way we handle disagreements and whether we shy away from conflict or throw ourselves full force into an argument every chance we get. For instance, the author shares a personal story about growing up with an abusive older stepbrother. The abuse was so severe that he lived in constant fear, even getting a bloody lip while he slept. This fear led him to develop a defensive fight mode in disagreements, always ready to protect himself. It wasn't until he forgave his brother that this began to change. The forgiveness wasn't for his brother's sake it was a way for the author to free himself from the toxic emotions that were clouding his interactions. Forgiveness, as the author points out, is liberating and doesn't require the other person's participation. The author refers to these impactful past experiences as life disagreement markers, or LDMs. Whether it's something from childhood or a recent event, these markers shape how we approach disagreements today. By identifying our LDMs, we can start to change unhealthy patterns and engage in more respectful disagreements. Along with having a hair-trigger defensive fight mode, another common trait that gets in the way of respectful disagreement is naive realism. Maybe this sounds familiar as well. It's when someone has the idea that they see the world as it really is, and if someone else sees it differently, it's because they're flawed. The naive realism mindset can lead to misunderstandings and conflicts, as we often overestimate how correct or accurate our perspective is. But it's a common perspective nonetheless, and recognizing when you have it can make a big difference in reducing conflict and becoming more open to other viewpoints. Along those lines, it's important to recognize your own tendency towards either building bridges or building barriers. From this point on, we're going to focus on taking down barriers and building bridges through a willingness to truly listen to others and valuing the threads of humanity that connect us all. The tips ahead will be useful tools in guiding us toward respectful disagreements and fostering healthy relationships, whether in professional or personal settings. But remember, the key principles remain, always be an active listener, stay self-aware, reflect on your actions, and practice empathy. Chapter 3. Challenging Your Perspective with Curiosity Without further ado, let's dive into the aforementioned Five Pillars model. These are the five foundational ways to bridge divides and break down the barriers that keep us divided. We start with the first pillar, challenge your perspective. This ties into what we discussed earlier, recognizing that everyone we meet is a unique individual with their own dreams, concerns, and experiences. This mindset is crucial. Seeing others as complex humans deserving of respect is essential for meaningful interactions. Moreover, understanding that others have experiences and perspectives we can learn from is vital for all the pillars that follow. A key part of this first pillar is cognitive reframing. Cognitive reframing is the habit of rethinking and adjusting thoughts or assumptions that might otherwise become fixed. For example, if you've been telling yourself that you're not smart enough to be taken seriously, cognitive reframing helps you interrupt that thought and reconsider it. This process allows us to rethink opinions that might be based on quick judgments and biases. Instead of labeling someone as aloof, we might consider they're simply introverted or having a rough day. This shift in perspective fosters a more empathetic and open-minded approach, improving our relationships. Challenging your perspective also involves reconsidering the limits of what you're exposed to. It's easy to stay in a comfortable bubble, surrounding yourself with people and ideas you're already inclined to agree with. But this can narrow your worldview. Consider how selective exposure may be limiting your understanding. While it's natural to seek comfort, engaging in challenging conversations with people from different backgrounds can be enlightening and beneficial. If finding receptive people from diverse backgrounds isn't easy, it's still possible to broaden your perspective. Books, podcasts, and online resources offer a wealth of viewpoints that can expand your understanding. The second and third pillars, be the student and cultivate curiosity, support the first pillar. 
They encourage an open mind and a flexible approach to thinking. Being a student might feel unfamiliar. The author shares a story about Robert, who was trained in debate tactics and approached every disagreement as a chance to teach. His relationship suffered, particularly with his partner Michelle, who grew tired of feeling like she was always being lectured. Fortunately, Michelle got through to Robert, and he embraced a student mindset. As a result, he began to flourish, realizing he could learn from Michelle's perspective and those of his colleagues. He started listening and truly comprehending. Comprehension is the key to the second pillar. It means listening with the intent to learn, which leads to greater empathy, understanding, and reduced conflict. The third pillar, cultivate curiosity, is similar. We often jump to conclusions based on the knowledge we have. Being curious means resisting this tendency. It's about having the courage to ask, tell me more. Being curious during disagreements allows us to expand our understanding and create richer, more nuanced relationships. By seeking more information, we can build bridges of understanding and transform how we approach conflict. Chapter 4 Embracing a Complex World Let's get right into the fourth pillar, Seek the Gray. To put it simply, seeing the world in black and white limits our understanding of its nuances. By embracing the gray areas, we recognize what's real, that the world is complex and full of different perspectives. The key to this pillar is shifting your mindset away from competition and binary thinking and more towards collaboration. Disagreements are bound to happen in life, but rather than seeing this conflict in terms of winning or losing, you can see it as a chance for collaboration, one that fosters empathy, understanding, and a chance for collective learning. Competition drives excellence but hinders constructive dialogue. When disagreements arise, treating them as challenges to be solved together is the more productive route. Respecting different viewpoints promotes mutual respect as well as the idea that we can learn from each other to find inclusive solutions. True dialogue is when we're working towards creating something new, rather than just defending our viewpoints. For this to happen, we need to avoid simplistic binary thinking and start seeking the gray so that we can appreciate the intricacies of any situation. Finally, let's look at the fifth pillar, agree to respect. Here, it all comes together and we see what a respectful disagreement looks like from the ground up. Where to start? When you consider this question, you can think of a drum circle. When people join a drum circle, they come to be a cooperative part of an enriching experience. They come to enhance that experience, but they don't enter into it thinking about how they're going to dominate or impress anyone. So you want to start with a cooperative, respectful attitude. Choose your words carefully and work towards harmony, trying to ensure that each interaction contributes positively to the overall conversation. The way we phrase our questions can significantly impact the tone of the conversation. So, be mindful and choose words that invite understanding rather than confrontation. For example, you might be a person who can't stand tattoos. But instead of asking why someone, why on earth would you get a tattoo, you could instead ask, what inspired you to get that tattoo? Both of these questions are aiming for the same information, but one is potentially insulting, while the other is respectful. Acknowledgement is one of the last pieces of the respectful disagreement puzzle. This means acknowledging when things are going well and, perhaps more importantly, when they aren't. This is a way of showing respect to the other side of the divide and helping to build that bridge across. The aim is to treat everyone, always, with kindness, empathy, and respect, and to do this by valuing their unique backgrounds and perspectives. With this approach, we don't aim for winning but we greatly increase our chances for understanding and bringing all sides closer together. Final Summary the main takeaway of this summary to I Respectfully Disagree by Justin Jones Fosu is that to help combat the divisive nature of today's conversations, we're introduced to five transformative pillars that are designed to build bridges and enhance how we handle disagreements. 
The first pillar, challenge your perspective, encourages us to recognize and respect the complexity of others' experiences and viewpoints. The second pillar, be the student, advocates for adopting a learner's mindset to enrich conversations and deepen understanding. Pillar three, cultivate your curiosity, emphasizes the importance of seeking to understand others rather than making assumptions. The fourth pillar, seek the gray, urges us to move beyond black and white thinking and embrace nuance and collaboration. Finally, Pillar 5, Agree to Respect, underscores the necessity of acknowledging and valuing diverse perspectives to foster more meaningful and respectful interactions. Together, these pillars provide a comprehensive framework for transforming disagreements into opportunities for growth and connection. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.